A Bond's back. Keep hearing it. Bonds are back. Bonds are back. A Bonds back. To be honest with you, I think bonds were back. I think they were pretty attractive on October. We've had quite a stupendous rally just we over have. the past six weeks. We've come down 80 or 90 basis points from the high in the 10-year. We've tightened in credit, both high yield and IG, and a space that I like a lot. Mortgage backs have come in a lot. So I thought that there were good opportunities back then. Now I'd pause a little bit. I think uh, valuations are a little bit rich, and I think there's going to be a bumpier couple of months ahead. As you look across the curve, where on the curve is, is rich, do you think? I think the long end is rich. I think the 10-year Treasury through three and a half, probably through three and three quarters is rich. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to test 4% as we go into the first quarter of 2023. You look at the fundamentals of the tips market, you're talking about break-even inflation now at 220. That's a real hurdle, as well as real uh, real rates, 1.1%, which I think long-term is probably a fair valuation, if not a little bit rich. So long end is rich. Short end, I think, is actually quite attractive. So 4% Fed funds rate, what does that mean? 4% 10-year yields, what does that mean in terms of the economic outlook? Does that mean that the Fed isn't going to go as far as people think and that the inflationary impulse is going to be a little bit more protracted than a lot of people are pricing in? We think as we get into 2023, the market's really going to settle as, in terms of long-term valuation for the 10-year. There's going to be volatility in between. But right now, we're not just looking at uh, the next two or three months. We're looking at where we are in the end of 23 into 24. A lot of our uh, uh, clients are long-term investors. We want to put things into their portfolio that they're going to hold for a period of time. And we think fair valuation for the 10-year once we emerge through the cycle of 2023 is in that three and three quarters to four and a quarter percent for, for treasuries. That's kind of shocking to me, and, and I'll explain why. I'm looking at a credit market that's grown up under this idea that treasury yields would be around 2%. Uh, well, how does that get completely transformed as companies actually have to refinance in a 4% treasury yield environment? That is a completely different scenario. I think there are a couple of things that are going on here. One, of course, is that QE is, is something of the past. So we don't have this, the global central banks buying a lot of those long treasuries, pushing treasury yields down. But we also think longer term inflation is going to be above the 2% that the Fed is targeting. It's something that the Fed's going to have to wrestle with longer term. 3% perhaps is the right number. There's a lot of fundamental things that are going on with the U.S. economy as we emerge from COVID. Think of the change in the composition of the labor force. Think about work from home, the gig economy, quiet quitting. It's going to make uh, incentives to work a little bit different. Think about what's going on in terms of onshoring. Um, you see the TSMC plant that was uh, that broke ground yesterday. That's not going to be the lowest cost producer of chips globally. You're never going to get American-produced chips cheaper than you are in Asia. Think of all the investments that are going to be being done in decarbonization. That's all going to raise basic global costs, and we think we're going to settle into a level of inflation that's higher than that 2% that we had in the late So teens. we've had a multi-decade bull market in bonds, and in every cycle we've had lower lows in the Treasury market. Lower lows, in fact, lower peaks, rather, in the Fed funds hiking cycle as well. Is this something that you think is going to change in the next several decades in the way it did over the last three? Well, of course, the obvious answer is yes, because if you extrapolate those lower lows, we'd get to negative rates because we were basically near the zero floor in 2020. And I think given the experiment that they had over in Europe, that's not going to happen again. No, negative interest rates, I think, are, are tossed aside as policy. And I do think that because of some fundamental structural changes, yes, you're going to see increasing rates, not back up to the 8 or 9% that we saw in the, in the 80s, but I do think the market's going to get comfortable with 3% or maybe even 4% uh, sovereign debt yields. 